Hello everybody and welcome to Rock Melon Recycle number two, Beginners Art Journaling with Lulu Art Mixed Media Supplies. Today we're going to talk about paint. Probably, probably most of us have in our cupboard some sort of paint. They might look like this, or they might look like this, or you, they might look like this. So what I want to talk about is briefly paint. First of all, there's about three different qualities. There's the student paint, and mostly they're going to say it on there that they'll, they actually are student paint. Yep, Derivan student acrylics. They are what we usually give our kids. And for art chilling, they're a great start. The thing is with student paints, is they're actually got a transparent quality to them, which as an art journalist, and because I go over so many um, things like pages, as in dictionary pages or music sheets, because I actually put my colour over the top of it, they're actually a really good quality that I like to use. Okay, but just need to be aware that they are uh, the cheapest paints. So the second sort of quality paints would be probably the Liquitex Basics range. This is just what I have in my cupboard. You might have something different, which are pretty good. Uh, permanent, water resist, flexible when dry, and they are less transparent, which means they're more op opaque, which means they're going to, you're going to be uh, able to paint over a background design and the everything won't show through necessarily, depending what colour that you choose. So I do use those quite a bit. But my favourites, of course, is the top of the range. So we're looking at the Diana Wakeley paints and also the Dilutions paints by Diane Reeveley. They're totally different quality. They have more pigment in them. They are mostly uh, fully opaque, which means you get great coverage when you're putting words over the top. This is these ones are heavy body paints, which means you want to make some textures. If you want to do some lettering, if you want to make um, roses that sit off the page, these would be the paints for you. They are long wearing, they are light fast, they are permanent when dry, uh, and they are simply awesome. And they blend so well together, even um, all of these different brands blend beautifully together. Let's get started, shall we? The other things you'll need today is some paint brushes, you'll need a water pot and something to put your paints on. I just usually use an ordinary plate and I find that everything peels off very easy. I just leave it in the sink to soak overnight so I'm not throwing things away as I use them. Let's get started today. So in our first page I showed you, we did this page. So if you missed it, go back, we, can, we, we learned how to use ink sprays. Today we're going to be using paint. Now the first thing we're going to do is put a background down. I keep a drawer full of pages, dictionary pages, music sheets, maps. Beautiful. Just the right tone. Doesn't matter what condition they're in because you can use those as part of your design. So today, let's put down a sheet of paper. Now because of last time we were using ink sprays, you can see that some of the word has actually come through. Now because we're using paints today, it's less likely that it's going to go through the page, so I'm actually going to use the page next to it. The other thing you'll need to use today is the Mod Podge. It's a water-based sealer and glue, and it's a great finisher, and I use it on most of my projects. The best way to put it onto your page is with a brush, a foam brush. I find it's quick and easy, but you could also use your wide paintbrush. I haven't picked a word sheet with anything in particular, so I'm just going to generously put Mod Podge all over. Now it does dry quite quickly, so I find I really need to work quickly. Not too worried if a bit gets onto my page behind because I'm actually going to cover that anyway. If you don't have any paper at home, I actually do sell them in my Made It store. You can go in and just buy a pack of vintage papers. Now let's go 
I'm going to put it this way. I'm just going to go into my corner, uh, middle fold I should say, smooth it out. You can leave that to dry or you can dry it with your hair dryer. But I'm actually going to use another piece of paper over on here so I'm going to leave it to dry while I work on my next page. What I'm going to put over here is going to be a printout that I made up myself called Beautiful and it has lots of encouraging words and quotes on it and it's something that I enjoy using in my art journal pages. So I'm just going to Mod Podge that on as well. And this sheet will be available in my free printables down, download area on my blog rockmelonrecycle.com so you can copy this art journal page if you would like. You need to push into those core into the middle section quite well so that when we open and close and it's all completed our page is going to work. And the next thing I'm going to use is a silhouette of a woman. And I'm just going to cut it out on the line because what I want to be able to do is use both shapes, the positive and the negative. And I'm going to show you a couple of different ways that you can use silhouettes of a, uh, of a face profile. I'm actually going to use this piece but I can save that because there's other ways that I would use that. Okay let's think about our paint palette. What colour do I want to use? I'm going to go with this absolutely beautiful green and what I'm actually going to do is I want to water it down so it remains transparent. I just have a little water spray bottle here, you know what, and I can just spray a couple in. I think that'll be enough. We'll soon know. I'm going to grab my biggest brush that I've got. I'm going to mix this through first. Now remember, just use what you've got. Whatever paint you've got is fine. Whatever brush you've got is fine. Now what we also want to do is protect our work that's underneath. I've just got a piece of paper to protect my work. Okay. I'm going to take this. What I'm going to do is simply use the shape as a stencil. And I'm going to create some colours that go across. Now you can see it is very transparent, which I think it would be if I was totally undiluted, but I want it quite transparent. I'm going to put some colour, especially in the corners. So as you can see, I'm working from my stencil onto my page, and that will prevent, if I was to go this way, my paintbrush and my paint would go underneath and you'd get lots of bleeding but if I do it this way I'm not going to get that effect at all. Just going to do a little bit more because I'm actually going to change colours. I'm going to do some blue same thing I'm going to dilute it a little so all I'm wanting is a background. Okay, just going side to side. Okay, just blend it all the way through. I'm going to leave my silhouette on there because I'm going to continue with some more work on that. Because what we're going to do is we're going to do some stenciling there. I think we'll use something from the Tim Holtz collection. Now, I want to stay in the theme, 
of my, my color scheme because I want the other side really to stand out. So what I'm going to use is that lime green here. So green and green. Not going to dilute this one because I'm going to be stenciling with it and I need my stencil brush. If you've used it and you've washed it, you must dry it, dry it, dry it so well. Otherwise you will get blurry paint and you won't get your good stencil. Okay, here we go. Just lined it up. You're always dabbing up and down. You do not want to be painting like this because you'll actually push the paint underneath. I'm just going pretty quickly over it and allowing these colours. So I think there's a very appropriate stencil, a little bit about a blooming, blossoming, flourishing. There's my clock going, shining. All right, just a little bit more in that corner. This is my latest stencil and I'm just loving it. I bought it with some money I received for my birthday back in December. Okay, and I'm actually just going to do it again. And you know what? No, I'm not going to flip it because then I'll get paint there. I'm going to carefully position it maybe just a little bit lower. Just because I don't want it to all look the same. And again, I'm going through with my stencil. When you're using your stencils, always wash them off straight away because the paint will dry really well to them. And as you can see, that's where the, the ladies... I can see where the stencil still is, so I don't need to stencil all of that. Just where it's green. All right, how are we going? Excellent. All right. Okay, I'm going to wash that straight away. Let's see what it looks like. Beautiful. There's our shape. Well, it's a good idea to dry this really well now before you take the next step. So what we need to do is actually use the other half of the stencil that we cut out. And we're going to place it there to protect our work. Now, if you want to make sure it stays really steady, you can just use some sort of, this is painter's tape that I got at Bunnings. Uh, I just seem to have it on hand and I do use it all the time. The thing with the painter's tape is that it'll peel off without peeling my paint off, without peeling the page off. You can use, if you have only got washi tape, that also works okay. All right, so the next thing is we're going to start working on this side. On this side. We're going to go for something on the opposite side of the colour wheel now. We're going to go for the pink and magenta, oh, sorry, the tangerine and the magenta colours. So you can either go with um, pinks and oranges, things like that, yellows, because what we want to do is we want to have the contrast on our work. In fact, I'm going to use a narrow brush, because what I'm going to do is I'm going to do stripes now. So what I want to do is have it as though this is flowing from her, from as her hair. So I'm going to start here. I'm going to go too wide. I'm going to leave a space. Now you can still see through it. Now I really need to protect my work on the other side here. So we're going to continue with our lines. I'm probably going to need at least three colours, if not four. And I'm just, they don't have to be straight. There's no art to it or how I'm choosing it. I just wanted to, her to have flow and hair. Okay, so we're coming here now. This is more her neck area so I won't do it as close and I think even I'll need to do some in, in here And you can see that um, you can see our words through it still.
all right, that's pretty pink and purple, pretty much covered there. Apply a third colour. I've got the orange, the is it tangerine. Nice warm colours. Beautiful. And again, I'm just going to go over the pink as well. I'm not going to keep it specifically to one bit. Keep in mind that orange and purple will make some sort of brown, so I don't want to go too much over the purple. I'm happy to go over the pink because that's going to make a lovely orange. Again, this is just going to be my background, so I'm not worried about every little bit of white. I'm going to allow some of that white to stay. Don't forget to wash your brushes out when you're finished and take them out of the water. So if you leave your paint brushes in the water, it actually creeps up your brush into the handle and all of your paint on your paintbrush will <laughs> it will peel off as I've done with several of my paintbrushes, so don't do what I do. <laughs> quality it is going to go over the top of your paint. So I'm running it through some of those spaces. Add a few highlights there. Beautiful. You can let that dry. This is the best uh, flesh colour paint I have ever used. This is the Serum Coat one from Lulu Art and it's called Santa's Flesh. It's a really good paint from Americana. So we're going to do the woman having a face here. So again I'm going to use that same technique of the stencil. I don't want to touch over here because I will put my stripes in it. Beautiful colour. Of course I often mix a little bit of brown with it too or even some pink for different highlights but generally I just use it quite straight to start with and we'll see how it goes. I know it's not everyone's skin tone, I'll put some pink in it, but it is a nice mid-range one that's reasonably accurate. That's my own fault. I never did mind about the little things. Just go with it. Got to enjoy it. Take a breath. Just allow it to happen. Now you don't want to leave that the painter's tape on all day. I usually try and remove it as soon as I have finished the area because it's harder to get off later. Pretty good. It's exactly the look I'm after. And I can go around with my paint by itself there. Now a little bit has spilled over. So what I can do here is get a nappy wipe and have a go at just removing that. I don't want to rub too hard though because I will take the next layer off. And it's for me, it's not for anyone else to see. Perfectly imperfect. I've decided it needs a little bit of gold. Now there's three paint colours I don't skimp on and I always buy the more expensive ones. And that would be gold, that would be black and that would be white. So I've got to, I'm going to get a really fine brush now and apply some gold. I just feel like it needs a little bit of bling. I'm just going to make it follow the hairline that we've already got in light, um, already applied. Not all dry here, so I'm being a little bit careful not to mix my brush too much. Not oh, too late. Mixed it. All right. Sometimes you've got to know when to stop. That's enough. <laughs> I 
Okay, next I want to add something to help it flow and create the seam off my page. So what I've chosen is some butterflies. This is just a sheet that I grabbed off the internet of butterflies. And again, I'll load this on my printables page. So before I cut them out completely, what I'm going to do is actually paint them. So I'm going to want my contrast on my warm colours. So I'm probably best going again with our blues and green and maybe some yellow. Let's see how we go. Choose your, uh, the more transparent paints, I think. Our beautiful fresh lime. And I'm going to completely go over this butterfly. But I'm going to leave it so that I can see the outline as well. Because what I'm going to do, of course, is cut it out. But for now, I'm just wanting the whole lot of it painted and I'm just going to make sure my brush strokes go in a nice um, angle because you're going to see all the brush strokes. So I'm going from the inside of the body to the outside of the body. And as you can see I've got a piece of scrap paper underneath. You could um, paint very carefully or even texture in butterfly. You don't have to paint over the black, it's just the look that I am using. I'm not going to worry about the antennas because they're going to be chopped off anyway. Okay, and then for these, well, I think I'll stick with traditional colours, which would be a nice bright orange. Now, if I'm going to dry these off, they're going to go all over the place. So I'm going to do one at a time. And the best way to dry them is to hold it down with something. So I just hold it down. I think they need a little bit more colour. So I'm just going to add another layer to them. And I'm going to do that with bubble wrap. Ordinary bubble wrap applied with my finger. I'm going to go from the pink onto the, onto the orange. When you apply it with your finger, it gives you a much better covering. You can just blob it on. When you apply it with a brush, you tend to brush it off. Now it's time to cut them out. I'm not taking an awful long time about it. Just a good general outline is what we're after. things I'm going to do with it is colour in his body to give him a little bit of depth. Now I could go black but I'm going to see if the grey is dark enough. I wanted to pull our eyes in. I'm actually just going to go around the outside very very carefully. Make it look a little bit of a bit 3D and like it has depth. And they're kind of half right on the paper and half right on my scrap piece of paper to get a really thin outline with a, with a texture. You can use any texture you like. I'm going to do that with all of them. So there we have our butterflies cut out, um, outlined, and the middle of their body is in a darker colour so that we can see them a little bit more and that they have some depth. So what we're going to do now is we're going to put them onto our paper. And I'm going to fly them, I think, from one side of the woman to the other side. So I've got the warm colours on the cool colours. I'm not sure if I've done this very well. That might have to go there because I don't want it on there because it gets a little bit lost. Um, maybe that one up in that corner and maybe this one here. There we go and then we're going to leave some journal space over here. So I'm just going to 
stick them down with our Mod Podge. Now because it's paint, the Mod Podge uh, will not smudge the paint, but it would if we were using the inks. Going to use just a black pen, and the trick with getting it, getting antennas right, is just flick them on. Don't draw carefully and slowly. Just put start in the round about the middle, and flick them on, and they'll be just about right. Beautiful. Okay. Next, I feel it needs some words. Today, I will be my own kind of beautiful. think that's the quote we need to use. Now I'm looking at my work and I'm thinking I need to reuse this stencil. And I'm thinking I will just put it here where the hair joins with the her body and I think I'll just do it in white. I'm going to do it before I put the, the words on because I just feel like it needs a little something. Much happier today I will be my own kind of and I'm going to stamp the word beautiful. Uh, Grab your fingerprints on, but that's not a problem. And what I'll do is outline it. Makes it jump off the page a little bit, pushes the background back. I'm going to use an alphabet stencil I seem to have. I always space it out and think about where it's going to be. My own kind of beautiful. B E A U T I F. Okay, so it's going to be very tight. So I'm going to start right over here next to the butterfly and really hope it fits in. Now if your stencil brush is very big, what you need to do is take your tape and seal off the letters next to it so that you don't go into the gap or seal up the top and the sides. Okay, that's a really helpful tip. Just feel like it needs a little bit more and what I'm going to do is try and draw our eye into the butterflies and the quote which is the main focus. And the way I'm going to do that is to put some colour onto the edges and I'm going to use some darker colour so that's going to help draw our eyes inward. So I'm going to use a little bit of this straight and I'm just going to put my finger into the lid and see if that'll stand out. Not really. But I can put that over this side. Just rubbing my finger along the edges. That's just going to help tie in this side to that side. So what I need is a colour over this side that maybe is part of over here, but I don't want to use the light lavender that I've used, so I'm going to introduce a darker purple. Sometimes you can just unscrew and use a little bit from out of the lid. 